2023 has been an amazing year for Home Assistant. We've had a whole bunch of new features, new integrations, and of course, all the work that's been done throughout the year of the voice, including the addition of a new local voice assistant and lots of other really cool voice assistant changes. But in today's video, we're gonna be having a look at five features that I really like in the final update of the year, which is the 2023.12 update. Check it out. What's going on guys, I hope you're all doing well. Kicking this off then, we've got my first new feature, and it's the ability to re-import blueprints. If you make use of a lot of different blueprints in your setup, then you'll know that when it comes to the time of updating a blueprint, this actually is a little bit of a chore. There's not really a convenient way to actually update it and download the latest version, or even be notified that there is a new version. To do all of this, it's a manual process for you. You have to just keep track of those sources or just periodically check them. Now, this update doesn't quite fix that and it doesn't add that full ability system that we'd want, but it is a step in the right direction. With this update, we've now got the ability to re-import a blueprint, which will give you a button that will allow you to actually just download the latest version of that blueprint, and it will just basically re-import the newest version over the top of your existing one. While this isn't quite a fully fledged update system for blueprints, it definitely is a step in the right direction, and it does make updating your blueprints at least just a simple one button click. Now, it is worth noting here as well that any blueprint that you wanna be able to perform the re-import on, does need to come directly from the Blueprint Exchange over at the Home Assistant Forum. If you're making use of any really big Home Assistant Blueprint projects, such as the NS Panel Home Assistant Blueprint, which again is still a massive mouthful, but this little update is gonna make your life a lot simpler thanks to that one button click. Moving on then to my second feature, we've got some changes to the default dashboard. The default dashboard is the dashboard that Home Assistant initially generates for you whenever you actually start Home Assistant. And by default, this dashboard gets generated with all of the different entities and devices that you have. And it tries to smartly categorize them into the different areas if they're assigned. And if they're not, you just end up with this big list of different entities and devices, which quickly makes this default dashboard very unruly and not really useful. You have to scroll through a big list and it is just kind of cumbersome. Well. In this update, Home Assistant are actually working on refining that and they're trying to give you a dashboard that is more usable and isn't just going to be a dashboard that you just hide or just forget about. So now in the latest released, we've got some brand new options that allow you to actually adjust the behavior of the default dashboard and just make it a little bit more usable. When you initially start Home Assistant now or you generate a default dashboard, you're going to be presented with some options and these options are going to allow you to actually edit and customize what's actually visible on that dashboard. So you'll be able to specify which areas you want to appear on the dashboard. You can hide areas and you can actually use a little drag and drop action and reassign them so you've got the areas that are most important to you right at the top. You've then got an option to hide entities without an area, which is gonna remove that horrible list of just all those cumbersome entities. And there's also an option to hide the energy dashboard because if you make use of any of the energy stuff, then you'll know that there's lots of it, which again, on this default dashboard just quickly fills it up. This one's definitely more of a unique feature because the default dashboard hasn't really seen much love and attention since it was initially released. I've also personally found this one quite useful because the other weekend I spent my weekend updating and changing my home assistant to a brand new setup and a brand new system. And it was nice to actually be able to make use of these features and actually use the default dashboard, which on my new setup is actually currently all I have. On to my third feature then, and we've got the brand new thermostat card. In update 2023.9, home assistant added a brand new entity dialog for the thermostat and it gave us this really pretty interface to actually allow us to interact with the thermostat. Well, since then, lots of people have been asking this design to be carried over to the thermostat card, and that's exactly what they've done in this update. So now we've got the same matching entity dialog information, but it's all visible and controllable within the card. And another addition to this thermostat card is the ability to actually view different features, which are available through the tile card. Up next, we've got a rather small change, but it's one that I personally find really useful, and it's some changes to the login page. You've probably been greeted by the default login page many, many times, and you'll know that if you forget to press that little keep me logged in button, that the next time you open a new tab or Home Assistant times out, you'll have to re-enter your credentials and just log back in, 
which isn't really a huge issue, but it is an issue if you've got multiple different Home Assistant instances, maybe you're looking after our friends, or maybe you've got lots of different dev and test setups. When you're having to log in all the time, it's just a massive pain. Well, thankfully, again, in this update, this new feature adds a trusted network. So if Home Assistant knows you're on your own home network, then it will just automatically keep you logged in. You won't need to remember to press this button. It will just do that for you. The login page has also received a little bit of a facelift. So it's now got more of a modern design to it, which makes it look a little bit more mac -y or old school Windows or netflix -y. So any user that's permitted log on access to your system will have their little icons available. And if they've got a set picture, that will also be visible along with their username. To log in as one of these users, you'll just need to simply select the username or the icon and then enter the password for that user. As Home Assistant likes to keep everything local and private, if you're logging in externally from your network, you won't be able to see those icons or any of those names. And instead you'll be greeted with that default login page. Wrapping this all up then, we've got my fifth and final feature of the year, which are some brand new services that were added to the to-do list. The two new services that have been added are a direct continuation to the work that was done in the previous release, which added to-do lists and also to-do entities. The first service, which is to-do.getItems, allows us to list all of the items on a singular list. The second one, which is to-do.removeCompletedItems, is a brand new service that will remove any completed items from a set to-do list. Another really nice change that the to-do lists have had is that whatever the URL is for that set list will be static and tied to that set list. So you can now use that set URL to always open up that set to-do list, which is nice if maybe you wanna cast a set list or nice if you wanna be able to go to that direct page and always be able to view that list. And there we go, guys. That's been a quick look at five new features that I really like in the final update of the year for Home Assistant. If you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.